Good afternoon. It's kind of hard to beat that. I have the pleasure to introduce Mr. El Mani Esvaini. Um, he's actually the executive director of the National Catholic Foundation, as well as the former National Guide Right Director of Catholic Alpha Psi Fraternity Incorporated in Education. El Mani Esvaini is responsible for educating over 1,600 students through his 17 year career as a teacher of social studies at Piscataway High School in Piscataway, New Jersey. He is the program coordinator of Piscataway High School's newly formed 50 Strong Peer-to-Peer -peer Mentoring Program, which focuses on improving the life and academic outcomes of young men of color and underserved youth in the high school. In 2011, Mr. Vine was appointed the National Guide Right Committee Chairman of Kappa Alpha Psi Fraternity Incorporated during the 100-year celebration of the fraternity's existence. Under his leadership, Kappa Alpha Psi increased their impact in serving over 12,000 young men of color in four inch locations throughout the country. Most importantly, he helped place Cat Alpha Psi among the ranks of national organizations, including impacting black male achievement through the appointments of such national boards, including Big Brothers Big Sisters of America, National African American Leadership Council, Hobson Incorporated Urban Initiative, the Cat Alpha Psi Foundation, and the Mentoring Stakeholders Advisory Team for the National Mentoring Partnership. This also paved the way to have the opportunity to work closely with the White House Initiative for Educational Excellence for African Americans, the Campaign for Black Male Achievement in the College Board. A few principles that Mr. Vine was by are one, never subscribe to the thought of impossibility. Two, movements are greater than any one individual, so play your role accordingly. And three, live life by your passion and purpose and nothing else. Ladies and gentlemen, <laughs> he's my role model. Please give it a give a hand for Mr. Almighty S. Vine. How's everyone doing? Yeah. Even though it's a Saturday, I'm gonna go ahead and go into teacher mode. Sorry, guys. <laughs> and as a matter of fact, you're gonna have homework. Oh, yes. You two in the back, even the senior. Tough luck. <laughs> Sorry. We're gonna call this class. We're gonna start class right now. And this class is called the Class for Leaders of Impact and Influence. Because that's what each and every one of you are. And when I start my class, I'm gonna start my class with a set of rules. I have five rules. Five rules that each and every one of you must adhere to. For now, and throughout the rest of your life, because you have to understand to be a leader of impact and influence is something that must be ingrained in your life for the rest of your life. It does not end, you do not get a degree, you do not pay tuition on it, you do not become an alumni of it, no, it is there for the rest of your life, becoming a leader of impact and influence. Do you gentlemen hear me? Yes. Okay, very good, so then let's start with the first rule. The first rule is you are no longer ever allowed to use the word impossible. I do not ever want to hear that you have used the word impossible. That word is what will keep you from maximizing your potential. That word is what's going to keep you from understanding every single thing that you can be. That word is what's going to make you use something that should look like a highway look like a rocky mountain, and it's all perception. There's no such thing as a possibility. Let me explain something to you. Gentlemen, you are part of the Kappa League program. This program came out of Kappa Alpha Psi Fraternity Incorporated. Kappa Alpha Psi Fraternity Incorporated was founded by 10 men in Bloomington, Indiana on January 5th, 1911. But what is so important for each of you to understand is that 1911 was before Brown versus Board of Education. It was before Malcolm X. It was before Martin Luther King. It was before black men or men of color and young black women were going off to colleges. And it was founded on the campus of Indiana in the state in which the Ku Klux Klan was founded. Only 56 years after the end of slavery. So the fact of the matter is you can't use the word impossibility. 
got about 762 different chapters across this country, 100,000 active members with four billionaires in it. Found about 10 men only 56 years after the end of slavery. So how can you, with all that you have, ever use the word impossibility? So I do not want to ever hear that you have used the word impossibility for anything. There is always a possible solution for everything. Do you hear me? Yes. Is that understood? Yes. That is rule number one. Rule number two, you will refuse and reject adamantly anybody who dares to set a low bar for you. Let me say that again. You will refuse and reject anyone who sets a low bar for you. You see, to be a leader of impact and influence means that you have to be always in an environment of a high bar. It means that when you sit with a 3.8, you better be thinking of Morehouse, you better be thinking of Harvard, you better be thinking of Yale, you better be thinking of Cornell, you better be thinking of Howard on scholarship, Hampton on scholarship. Those things have to be there. I went to St. Peter's Prep High School in Jersey City, one of the top high schools in the country. In my senior year, even though I was a B-plus student, I had a teacher tell me, instead of going to college, you should go to work. Because I think college might not be for you. That's what I was told. I talked to another teacher and said, what do, you, what, what do you think these, I, I, you know, my, my, my religion teacher told me, said, I really should think about, uh, uh, I really should think about going to work instead of going to college. And that teacher said, even though I had an A in that class, you know, that will build character for you. Now, this ain't no movie, so I'm not going to act like that. Those thoughts lasted more than 24 hours because when I got home, I don't even think I finished the sentence. Mom, my teachers told me that boy what? <laughs> but that's what people will have you think when they see you as a threat to their power. Because I want you to understand what the high bar means. The high bar means you are entering the realm of power the realm of control, the realm of where you control every single thing. And that is a threat to other people that do not want to see you have that. I want you to understand that so they will constantly try to set the low bar for you. You are to reject it. I ended up going to Boston College, graduating with two degrees and being a tutor to many people and an advisor and a mentor to even students that attended Harvard University. So much for the person that is here today. Rejected. But let me be very clear. I want to be very specific to you guys. What I mean, reject. If you have an 85 or above in your classes, you better be in either an honors class or an advanced placement class. I am not playing. I better not hear of any single one of you at the end of this year. If I check your grades, oh, what you thought was going to be inspirational? <laughs> <laughs> you thought it was going to be happy? <laughs> better tighten up. I'm dead serious. I better not hear of it. If I find out you got 85 or above in your classes, you better be in an advanced placement class. You better be in an honors class. And if the teacher says, well, you know, no, you will not accept no for an answer. 
you will get your mother, you will get your father, you will walk down. I'm telling you as a teacher, this is how it goes. This is how the game plays. I'm giving you the inside ball game. You better keep your ears open. Listen very carefully here. You take your mother, you take your father, you march down and you talk to that teacher. You tell them that I'm supposed to be in an advanced placement class. I am supposed to be in an honors class. If they say, well, well, then you take it to the supervisor. If the supervisor says, well, well, then you take it to the principal. And the principal says, well, well, then you better walk down to the superintendent's office and you stand in there. Now let me tell you why. Because if you want to get a four-year academic scholarship, you need a 3.6 or above, and you need a 14, sorry, 1340 on the SAT or above, but you also must have at least three AP courses on your transcript, plus at least two to four honors courses. Don't let them tell you no. Do not let them tell you no. If you hear of summer programs and they say, oh, this is important, do not let them tell you no. If they make it seem like, oh, I'm not sure, you might not be ready, do not let them tell you no. Oh, and by the way, I'm telling you this because it's not just going to happen in middle school. It's not just going to happen in high school. You're going to see it in college. And you're going to see it in your jobs. It's all right. I've been there. Two of them. Y'all know this one. I've been there in church. Church come like. My son was that age. She looked like. I'm like, yeah, we got to go because of you. <laughs> My daughter was sneakier though. She, she was like, ah! And then she stopped when they come and then start again. I always say about my daughter, so she's either going to end up at Harvard or become a stand up comedian. I haven't figured it out yet. But anyway, back to you gentlemen. So you must reject or refute and refuse anybody's low bar. Are we clear, gentlemen? Yes, sir. Are we clear? Yes, sir. You guys understand, I will be checking grades at the end of the year. Are we clear? Yes, sir. Good. Rule number three. This is a long term rule, but I will find you. <laughs> at some point in your career path, Your name better begin with CEO, CFO, Executive Director, Senior Partner, or President. And if it's not the first name, then at the end of your name better end with MD, PhD, or Esquire. <laughs> to be in the class of leaders of impact and influence, gentlemen, means guess what? You can no longer take on a career that means nothing. You can no longer deal in the doldrums of sitting in some corner office doing absolutely nothing. You can no longer just be happy with the check that you get. You can no longer take a position where your nine to five is just a nine to five that means absolutely nothing. That when you go home and somebody asks you, what did you accomplish today? I just did the same thing. No, the moment you entered into this program, gentlemen, you lost that right. The only thing that you can be is something great. Let me say it again, because I think you guys, oh, he's talking. No, no, no. You can only be something great. <laughs> I'm born and raised in Jersey, New Jersey. I came up straight during the time of crack and AIDS in the 1980s. 
no matter how bad they say things are now, we that grew up and know what the 1980s was, we know what bad was looking like. We know what New York City used to look like late 70s, what the Bronx looked like. I remember with Jersey City, everybody talk about downtown Jersey City. I remember the downtown Jersey City. Nobody wanted to go to that place. Came up, my own cousin, all messed up from HIV, died of AIDS, watching my friends become dealers. My life going this way, their life going that way. I was able to make it out. I was able to go to Boston College. I was able to become a, a, a brother, a member of Cap House Opportunity Incorporated. But the honor and distinction that this, this young brother from Jersey City, New Jersey, would end up being the National Godlike Chairman in the 100th anniversary of this historic and honored fraternity then to be the executive director of its foundation. I only know impact. So how I cannot tell you to be something other than a change maker. So I want to be clear on this third rule. What I'm really talking about is you have to be a change maker. You have to be a transformer. That means whenever you walk in the room, whatever you touch, you must transform it. Whatever you touch, you must change it. Wherever you go and whoever is in there should be listening to you. You should have the hand that moves people, the power of influence that moves people, that whatever you do and when you leave it, it is changed for the better. Do you understand? Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Do you understand? Yes, sir. Once again, I would be 80 years old, and if I find out you in a little cubicle, I'll take my cane and hit you over your head. <laughs> CEO, CFO, senior partners, SY. I better hear about somebody in here having a $100 million company. I better hear good. That's what I'm talking about. Because it can't be you. This is, this, uh, sometimes when we do these conversations and you know with these speeches, they're given in a way in which it's like, yeah, you can do it. But the speaker isn't even really being genuine about what they say. They're just saying it because, um, unfortunately, sometimes they're more into themselves, or they're saying it because they're getting paid, and they're like, well, this is what kids want to hear. I'm saying it because this is what's required of them. I'm saying it because there are already those that are movers and shakers in the world that look like you, that had less than you, and less than you that's already up there. We know they're in our organization. So why can't you? It should be a requirement. If I had my way, for the Oscar, if we make a requirement that if you come through the White Plains Duval Show Cap League, that by the time you are 35, you need to be a senior partner from some financial institution. <laughs> <laughs> Can we make that a requirement? Can we make it a requirement that if you are in the New Rochelle White Plains Capital League program, that by the time you are 45, you need to have a real estate and investment portfolio of $1.5 million? Can we make that a requirement? <laughs> y'all think I'm playing. I really think y'all think I'm, I am, I am not playing. There's a brother that we have, his name is Brother Corlotti, who is a senior partner at Goldman Sachs senior partner at Goldman Sachs. I'm not going to say what he did. And here's why I say I'm going to put that requirement on you, because through these brothers here, you got access to them. This is it. This is it like Bill. You got access to them. You have access to so much, and that's going to lead me to point number four. So are we good with point three? Yes, 
We got two more to go. Point four is so important. Your team. Let me say it again, your team. There's two parts to your team. Your team consists of those in your inner circle and your advisors. Let's start with your inner circle. If you ever want to know how successful that you're going to be, it's very simple. Who is in your inner circle? Uh, it, it's, it's that simple. It's, it, it's no different than a football team. It's no different than a basketball team. When you got, how many y'all play basketball? And you got, you know how you got to pick the team, right? You ain't trying to pick the weakest kid. I know it might be one of your friends. I know y'all be feeling bad. He be like, yo, let me play, right? Y'all know what I'm talking about. Yo, we got to play. Be like, yo, hold, hold on. I got a couple more people to pick. We got you. Yo, we got you. Or when you put together your team for your high school or your middle school, no matter what the type of sport, you always trying to pick the strongest crew. When you run a track, am I right? So then, why in the world would you even think about surrounding yourself with weak people that ain't trying to go where you trying to go? How in the world can you surround yourself with your boy that be cutting class? How in the world could you be dating the homegirl that be always getting in trouble with the teacher? How can you be hanging out in a car or on a block with the people that you know you shouldn't be? I ain't even gonna get into the whole, oh, you don't wanna be in the wrong place one time. That's not even the point. Because the person that's uh, Ivy League, who's the person that's Ivy League? Where's Mr. Ivy League at? Mr. Ivy League. Can the knucklehead at your school give you advice on whether to choose between an Ivy League or Boston College. No. <coughs> Can the knucklehead at the school give you advice on whether to apply for the Gates Scholarship or the Questbridge Scholarship? No. No. They do not know the food is in the cafeteria for the day, right? <laughs> But I'm being serious. If you ever want to know if you're on the right track, look at who's in your circle. If you're talking about you one day want to be a business owner, how many of your friends in your circle are business owners? If you talk about you want to be a doctor, how many of your friends are doctors? <coughs> one of my closest friends, she's like a sister to me. I look and I'm just amazed. Hopefully one day she'll run for a senator in, 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 uh, in Virginia. Kristen Clark, remember that name, Kristen Clark. She's always on MSNBC. She's the CEO for the, um, she's the head of the National Lawyers Committee for Civil Rights Under the Law. She actually was the one responsible for bringing all of the lawsuits in North Carolina during the election for voter restrictions. That's who I wrote with. My, my wife, I roll with my wife. My wife is one of the premier business owners in the New York City metro area. I'm not, she makes way more than me, so I don't even want to talk about it. I feel bad. <laughs> I be asking her for a loan. I don't even want to talk about but no, I'm, I'm dead serious. I want you to do me this favor, though. Take an inventory of your friends. And by the way, you may say, well, I don't want to show, I don't want to seem like I'm, listen, once again, guys, I grew up in the city, Jersey City. My boys I grew up with, I still respect them, I still love them, even though they made choices that I can't get down with. I see them, I give them a pound. I don't think of myself any better. 
I still love and respect them, but you gotta understand, if you try to move this way and they moving that way, it doesn't work. Doesn't mean you have no less love for them, but don't confuse love and movement. Let me say it again, don't confuse love and movement. You can love somebody, but that doesn't mean that they're gonna move the way you need to move for you. If you're going off the hill and your boys is staying on the corner, I'm sorry. Give them love, much love. Be out. Do everybody understand? Yes, sir. Next point on that surround yourself. The mentors. If you ever want to know how far you're getting, who are your mentors? That's right, the people around you. But I want you to understand, just like your friends will elevate, just like your friends will change and evolve as you evolve, so will your mentors. And it's not about getting rid of one and replacing it with another, but you can add as many mentors. Just follow this one rule. Your mentors should always be people personally connected to you, or you say, I want to emulate that person personally. It may be as a father one day, academically, yeah. Make sure you have that. And especially career-wise. The great thing about being in Capital League, gentlemen, is you have access to not just the mentors here in New Rochelle White Plains, you got access through them to almost every high successful brother that has ever come across Cap Alpha Psi. A lot of us are literally one phone call away. Take advantage of that. You're in rare air. Take advantage of that. Is that understood? Yes, sir. All right, the last one. Rule number five, you gotta be a philanthropist. Now I'm gonna change this word philanthropist because philanthropist has always been in the sense of giving money to help in others. You have to be a philanthropist. And here's what I mean by being a philanthropist. Listen, let me say this, as I look at every single one of you, ain't no way in the world none of you are gonna be successful. All of you are gonna be successful. All of you are gonna be powerful. I see it in your eyes. I see it in your eyes, this is done deep. But a life where success is simply based upon what you've gotten for yourself is no life at all. See, true living is when you give to others. When you invest in something greater than yourself. And by the way, that is the tenet of leadership. Leadership is not simply, I tell you to do something you follow. Leadership is when you invest in other people's purposes. You invest in other people's dreams. And when you say, come along, not come along, follow me to do what I've done. Come along, follow me so I can put you in a position to do what you need to do for your life. But you got to give. You can't be selfish. You can't just think about yourself. You can't just be all about me. You got to constantly give. Be hurt. Huh? You be all right. <laughs> but you got to constantly give. And I want to close by saying this. None of us are under the illusion of what happened yesterday. <laughs> Let me say that again. None of us are under the illusion of what happened yesterday. And if you are, ooh, we may have to have a parent-teacher meeting. <laughs> but hear me out. I always in class like this. Hear me out. Here, those of us that are adults, we do this because we know that you need us. But because you're in Capital League and it's a leadership program, I want you to understand that as you become successful, you know, people are going to need you. So your friend right now that's not in the program is going to need you. 
your parents are going to need you. President Obama inspired so much within so many of us. And I watched a lot of people yesterday crying as, as, as he was leaving. I'm not going to lie. You know, for three years I had the privilege and honor of working with the White House Initiative for Educational Excellence of African Americans. So I had the privilege of working under that initiative as well as with the Montgomery Community Initiative and working up close with the President. Powerful thing. He inspired a lot. But here's the truth. I shouldn't be the only person responsible for inspiring the nation of people. Why not you? And why not you right now? What grade are you? Senior. You're senior. Right now, there may be a senior in your school or a junior in your school that may not be saying much, but may be unsure of his direction. It might be words coming from you that get him on the right track. Sometimes, you gentlemen, you gotta understand this as men, we don't always show our emotions and we're very quiet. But you don't have no idea who you might be inspired with right now in your family, right next to you, or at your school. So I'm gonna challenge you on this. Always give more to the world. Always give more to others. Always look to bring others along and be the inspiration that others need. And yes, President Obama said, yes, we can. Let me change it up when it comes to all of you. Yes, you can. Class dismissed. to get our money and he has to go to the National Founders Day. We said this year we're changing oh, really? the day. So we no, have Brother McViney here. Really? Yeah, so <laughs> 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 So just a small token of our appreciation presented to Brother Armani as Viney in recognition for serving as keynote speaker during the capital induction ceremony sponsored by New Rochelle White Plains Alumni Chapter, Saturday, January 21st, Anthony A. Morgan Polmark, Piazza Chair. Thank you, brother. Uh, hold on. One quick note, because I want to tell you, you know, in, in serving as National Guide Right Chair, our gold standard program has always been Chicago, I mean, it's up there. I will tell you right here in knowing all the programs, the New Rochelle White Plains program is the fastest, most powerful growing program in the country. And I believe if it continues on its track, it could has the potential to become the number one Catholic League program in the country. <laughs> about Almani. When we were trying to set up this program, it was the summer of 2014, and it just so happened that Almani sent out a blast email. It's like, hey, I have some ideas. I want to you know, run to the guy right directors. And Brother Craig and I went to his house. We're like, we want to start a program and share. You know, he lives in Jersey. He's inviting all the guy right. We're going to be there. So it was about six or eight of us that to, um, to that invitation. But I tell you, I, it was the first time meeting with one on one, but he just made it clear like anything you need, just reach me. He gave me his number. It's like whatever information. There were so many nuggets. Me and Craig were just taking notes. And, you know, this is the reason why we're here where we are, because that brother opened his door. 
you know, he was cooking, I don't know, it was things on the grill, but he shared, I don't know, for about four or five hours about what it takes to have a successful God Right program. So definitely, I appreciate that. I always remember that, brother. Thank you. Special guest speaker, Brother Eula Roach, in recognition, recognition for serving as guest speaker during the Capitol induction ceremony sponsored by New Rochelle White Players. We love you, Brother. We love you, Brother. This one is from San Francisco last night, so you can give me. I appreciate that. Okay, so now we will start the induction procedure for the, the Gamma class of Kappa League. So brothers, prepare the candles and turn the lights out please. <laughs> <laughs> 